In today's video, the best movements to isolate and grow the glutes. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, I have a special guest helping me out. So one of my clients, De Raja Hill, was up in Tampa to do some research at the University of South Florida. De Raja is a part of the reverse diet study that's been going on that I've been talking about that I'm actually a part of as well, where they're taking people who competed in contest prep, doing some hormone and metabolic testing, strength testing, body composition testing, both before competition, four weeks after and eight weeks after. And so De Raja was up here at USF uh, to, to complete this. And so she came over after we got to talking. We decided to shoot some footage today and uh, it was really nice of her to do this because what I've been wanting to do is a video kind of showing some movements that isolate the, glute, the glutes and how to grow the glutes without necessarily engaging a lot of the other leg muscles like the quads and the hamstrings, okay? So when we hear things like squats are great for glutes, well, I can definitely say that there's probably some benefit to squatting, but the issue there is it's really impossible to isolate the glute, okay? You're not going to grow just a glute. So if you're someone that's looking to build glute muscle, but you don't necessarily want to increase the size of your quads or your hamstrings, well, these are my favorite movements. These movements are things that I have been putting into programs for a long time, but the issue is usually the execution of these movements. So what I'm gonna do here is show De Raja performing them, and I'm gonna do a little voiceover so you guys can understand kind of the thinking that goes behind that. I might actually try to pause the, the videos as well. And one thing I wanna talk about is De Raja's history. So De Raja, although she's only been competing for a year, last year she won an overall at an NPC show and then she placed uh, fourth at her first ever national show. I might have some footage uh, to put in here, some pictures so you can see that. But prior to that, De Raja has a history of sports. She played tennis, so we got to talking yesterday. She played tennis for almost 10 years. So anyone that knows anything about tennis knows that you change directions a lot, you move forward, back, you're sprinting. Well, the glute muscle is responsible for a lot of that activity. Okay, so I'm gonna show you her warm up, but the glute muscles are actually, you know, postural muscles, meaning they, they keep us upright, okay? But they can also be quite explosive. In fact, the gluteus maximus is the largest muscle in the human body. So let's go over the, the warm up that De Raja did, and then kind of go through each movement, and these are my favorite glute building isolation movements. Before we get into the meat and bones of De Raja going through her warm up and some of her lifts, I just wanted to show you kind of a visual so you could actually see what the glute muscles look like if you're not familiar. But here they are. So you got the gluteus maximus, which is the largest muscle in the body. It's mostly focused on hip extension. Then you've got the minimus and the medius, and they're mostly focused on hip abduction, which is basically like if you're moving the knee away from the body, okay? Adduction would be bringing the knee back into the body. Abduction, which is what their focus, is moving the knee away from the body. So let's get into the warm-up here. The purpose of the warm-up here is just to get activated, to actually feel the muscles moving before we get into the major movements. So the goal is not to pre-fatigue or wear the body out. It's just to get things moving, to make sure that we're actually training the muscles as we want to, to make sure the soft tissue in the area is warmed up. And it can also help with a little bit of mind-muscle connection so that you actually are targeting the muscles that you're supposed to be, especially when you're trying to eliminate something like the quad and the hamstring, it can be difficult. So let's take a look here at this movement with De Raja. So I'm gonna pause it at the bottom here and what I'd like you to see is that she's actually getting full depth. So all the range of motion on the single leg split squat or Bulgarian split squat, whatever you wanna call it, I see a lot of times in a gym setting, you'll have your foot too high. So if you look at De Raja's back foot, if that foot is too high, it would actually force her to put more of her weight on her foot, on the floor, on her toes. 
that would actually create more use of her quadriceps, okay? So the goal here is to keep the weight on the heel of the foot, which can make it harder to balance, but you'll get used to it. Some people will actually use their, um, their one hand to hold a dumbbell and one hand to hold something in front of them to balance better, but Deiraja is a really good athlete, so this was no problem for her. But if you keep the focus on getting a full eccentric contraction, so you're actually getting a full eccentric, sorry, I didn't mean contraction, full eccentric, meaning a full stretch deep so that actually, if you look here, her hip is slightly below her knee or right, below, right around there, okay? That means she's lengthened the glute as much as possible. Then when we let the video play here, you can see her go all the way to the top. And when she reaches the top, that is full contraction of the glute, okay? So that is what we make sure we're focusing on the glutes. If you do the split squat wrong, you'll certainly involve the quads and the hamstrings more, and it's going to be involved anyway. This is, without a doubt, my number one glute builder. I find this really isolates the glutes and grows glutes fantastically. Um, this is just her from another angle, so you can get a little sense of what it would look like. You see her weight is on the heel of her foot, and you see her knee stays right in line with her pinky toe, as I would say. All right, so she's just a really good athlete, and uh, obviously she's got some great muscular development overall. Um, so she's a great example of how it would look. So this is called the barbell hip thrust. And I have a squat pad at my house. So you can see you rest that on the hips. And the goal here is to bring the glutes all the way up to the top and really squeeze. Um, Brett Contreras has some really cool research that shows, you know, of all the muscles, the glutes are one that really benefits from a complete contraction. There's a lot more muscle growth happening at the contraction portion. So really focus on making sure you're able to bring that up and squeeze it. You know, one good way to do that is to hold it for a count and lock it because that should be the strongest portion of the lift, the static. If you're not able to hold it, then you're using a lot of momentum to get it there. So this is another great one. And you see her feet away from her body. Now, this is called a glute ham raise. The best way to focus on the glute ham raise here is to move this into a position where your body is able to really feel the squeeze in the glutes. If you see her keeping her shoulders slightly rounded forward, that will keep a lot of the stress off the lower back because you can let the lumbar take over in this, in this movement um, if you do it improperly. So this is just Deiraja from a different angle. She's in a really good position here. I think I was wearing her out having her do extra reps, <laughs> but, um, you know, obviously she's such a good athlete. She was able to keep going, but this really, really can isolate the glutes. And again, you want to focus on the big contraction at the top and squeezing. And then finally, we're just going to do a basic deadlift. Now we can call this a Romanian deadlift. We can call it a stiff leg deadlift, whatever variety you want to do. But what I really want to focus on here is that we're not doing a full range of motion where we're involving things like the quads and the hamstrings, okay? Once your knees begin to bend, you're going to start involving some other major muscles of the lower body. All right, guys, have a great one. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys soon.